All right, so hi everyone. Uh, my name is Caitlin Bryant Comstock and I'll be presenting today on the SUPCAP project, which was a collaboration between IntraHealth International and Ideas42. This project was funded by the Hewlett Foundation uh, and done in conjunction with the Uganda Ministry of Health. So the overall project goal and objective was to increase postpartum contraceptive uptake. Now I'm gonna give a very brief overview of the project timeline. So as mentioned earlier, this project took place in Eastern Uganda. We worked in six districts and we had four different phases, uh, formative research, intervention design and user testing, uh, we then conducted a quasi-experimental study. Based on results of that study, we scaled the intervention in all six study districts. So today I'm gonna to talk about two of our main intervention components, an interactive game called Together We Decide, which targets male partners of postpartum women, and a child-spacing planning card, which is designed to encourage couples' communication about family planning, and for those couples to make a plan to visit a health facility to talk to health workers about family planning. So I'm gonna spend most of my time talking about our interactive game, Together We Decide. So as you can see here, here's a photo of some men playing the game in Eastern Uganda. Uh, and this game is designed to address identified behavioral barriers to postpartum contraceptive uptake, including correcting underestimations of pregnancy risk, promoting accurate estimates of child cost, dispelling myths and misconceptions about contraceptive methods and encouraging couples communication. The game is facilitated by male village health teams and men are divided into different groups called households uh, to play the game. Now each game session takes about an hour. So not too long, pretty decent chunk of time. Um, and you can think of this game like the board game life if you've ever played that. Now, the overall winner of the game, so the objective to win the game, is for the household who has, at the end of the game, the most wealth per child. And I'm gonna go through some examples of how that can happen. So to start the game, each team is given a My Family card and a contraceptive method card. So the My Family card starts the man and the household out with what their family looks like. So this could range anywhere between one, as you can see on the screen here, seven children. So men are given their family card and they gain wealth accordingly. Each household also gets a contraceptive method card. So these will come into play later, which I will tell you about. But I want to draw your attention that each of these contraceptive method cards has the picture of the method on the front and on the back, it has some education about the method itself. So right from the bat, men are getting some education about all the different methods that there are and who these might be a good option for. So, you know, for example, injectables, good option for couples who think maybe they want another baby soon. But there's also the consideration of you need to talk to your wife if she's okay going to a health facility every three months for an injection, which is an important consideration to think about. All right, so each household uh, has this playing board where they are able to collect their wealth, which is represented by those white beads you see. All of the materials were sourced locally in Uganda, which we prioritized to enhance and increase sustainability options when we handed over the intervention at the end of our implementation period. And as households move throughout the game, they are able to draw different cards, life event cards, quiz cards, and cost cards. And I'm going to go into each of those cards here. So I'll give two examples of life event cards. Um, so the, this card, this first one, you know, your child, your children finished primary school with good grades. Congratulations. Now you have to pay a bead per child to send them to secondary school for one term. So this is designed to bring to light those long-term costs and expenses for having children. So men who draw this card are gonna to have to pay one bead per child, however many kids they have, to continue playing the game and to send their children to school. Now, this second card is a decision point card. So this is a life event. Uh, your wife gave birth six months ago. Um, there's a chance she may be able to become pregnant again. So what are you gonna do? Are you going to play your contraceptive method card that you received at the beginning of the game or are you going to say, you know what, I actually think we want another baby right now, so we're going to have another baby. 
Now let's just say that this household decided it's time for us to have another baby. They would then get this card, the, oh no, your baby was not born healthy. And this is where the VHT facilitator would pause and provide some education about why um, a child may be born unhealthy if they are spaced too close together. And so this is really a chance to have that discussion. You know, maybe the man says, well, it happened to my neighbor and their child was born perfectly healthy and fine. And there could be that chance for open and honest discussion and some education opportunities in a really safe space. And what we heard from our qualitative research is that men really enjoyed uh, the game just for playing it. They thought it was really fun, but they also enjoyed having a you know, low stakes space to talk about some of these sensitive issues in. Now, there are also chances in the game for participants and households to choose to have a healthy, spaced and timed pregnancy. And when that happens, they would get this card. So the congratulations on your new baby card, a happy, healthy baby. All right, so another set of cards that are in the game are quiz cards. So quiz cards are a chance to dispel some of the myths and misconceptions about contraception and correct underestimations of pregnancy risk. So this is where I'm going to ask for some audience participation and let me get my chat up. All right, so I'm going to read out a question and I would like you all to write your answer, either yes or no, in the chat. This is a very friendly quiz, so don't worry. There are no prizes or bad marks for getting it right or wrong. All right. If a mother is breastfeeding her child that is seven months old and her bleeding has not yet returned, is it possible for her to get pregnant? Yes or no? So you can go ahead and type it in the chat. All right, I'm seeing some answers coming in. Yes, you all are correct. So this is where the VHT facilitator would, you know, everyone has revealed their answers. The VHT would read the answer on the card and also be able to provide some of that additional education about, yes, it actually is possible to conceive even within that seven month period after delivering a baby. Um, one of the behavioral barriers we found is that Couples really were sort of underestimating their pregnancy risk. And so for something like this, they thought, oh, there's no way we could get pregnant. And so a lot of our cards are designed to correct that underestimation of pregnancy risk. So the last card I'm gonna to cover today are our cost cards. So as you can see here, these cost cards are designed to really crystallize the expenses of having children. And it's a really great way in the game to visually see that families with larger households are likely going to need on average to pay more for their children. And so, you know, as the men are around a table or under a tree, you can sort of see everyone's little board and see what, their, what wealth they are accumulating. And so for this, one of the barriers we found, as I discussed earlier, is that couples often don't think about those long-term costs of having children. And so these cost cards are a chance for that open discussion um, and really peer-to-peer -peer learning and support. So for example, with this cost card one, what are the costs for delivering a baby? So maybe I say, oh, well, health facility fees. And the household next to me says, oh, well, don't forget about the cost of a boda boda driver, or a taxi driver, or an ambulance to get her to the health facility or the hospital. And I say, oh yeah, I forgot about that, you know? And so it's a really nice way for that discussion to happen amongst the group and really have that conversation to sort of think about, oh yeah, there are all these fees that come up. All right, I have five minutes, so I'm gonna fly through this last slide. Um, so we can leave a little time for questions if there are any. So at the end of the game, men are given a child spacing planning card that they are supposed to take home to their wives to have a conversation about family planning. So this card is in a local language, but as you can see from the photos, that first block is asking men to go home, talk to their partners about, do we want more children? Yes or no? If it's yes, when do we want those children? So as you can see from this photo, this couple said in three years, great. Second block is, okay, 
based on that conversation, let's make a plan to go to the health facility to talk to a health worker about some of our options to help make that plan a reality. So this couple said, we're gonna to go to the health facility on November 10th last year. Um, and then the third block is a chance for the couple to either circle, highlight, um, note any of the contraceptive methods that they're particularly interested in learning about. So this couple didn't circle any, which is fine because you know maybe they wanted to know about all the methods or maybe they verbally told the health worker, you know, we're really interested in injectables. Can you tell us more about that? And so then on the back of the card, the health worker would notate if the couple received a counseling session, if they took up a method and what method they took. And then they would save these cards for our project team. So this is how we tracked our project information. And then they would also enter the information into FP registers and the DHS too. 